Good to have you with us this morning. We kick off this hour's coverage with a focus on the Canadian economy, which is on track to bounce back sharply in the final quarter of 2023. We mentioned those new GDP numbers in our newscast. On the surface, that could buy the Bank of Canada some time to put off interest rate cuts until it's confident, for example, about the inflation picture. But it is worth noting that the strength we saw was partly due to population growth. When you examine the economy on a per capita basis, it's actually shrinking. Speaking of interest rate policy, we have a decision on interest rates in the U.S. this afternoon from the Federal Reserve, and we're going to have full coverage later today. But there's no change in rates expected. People are trying to get a sense on when the Fed might start to consider cutting rates. Ahead of the decision, though, a broad gauge of labor costs in the U.S. cooled by more than forecast in the fourth quarter, a fresh sign of easing inflation pressures stateside. That could give the Fed room to cut rates this year. It's one of the most closely watched numbers by our first guest this morning, Earl Davis, who's head of fixed income and money markets at BMO Global Asset Management. He joins us here in studio. Earl, nice to see you. Mm, good morning. Um, where shall we start? Let's 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 focus on Canada's economy because you've got a headline number about whatever you want to say, resiliency, mm -hmm. a strong finish to the year. Do you buy into that? Oh, definitely. And if uh, you may may not remember the the road ahead in, in December, we said the biggest surprise that we we could see this year is a surprise to the upside in the Canadian economy. And that's what we're starting to see now. We, we had some numbers that came in better than expected. And the flash report for December actually points to a quarter of 1.4% growth where the Bank of Canada was predicting zero. So it does look very good. And um, wh what do you see as the main drivers for that resiliency? Well, the main driver is the U.S. and uh, how well the U.S. is doing. We're always a beneficiary of that. And, and people forget that, you know, U U.S. sneezes, Canada catches a cold, you know, and, and they're doing extremely well, lar very large surprises uh, economic wise. And we're benefiting from that as well. Now, I mentioned when you look on a per capita basis and because we've seen record uh, population in the country, does that mask the overall economic picture it, it's it's one that uh, the central bankers are, are having a hard time with right. you know they deal on aggregate demand that means everyone put together not uh, per capita demand so it, it's a tough one um, but you know what I, I think there it doesn't matter as much right now it's about the aggregate demand and supply in the economy so let's go back to that that um, that interest rate question um, our, our Bloomberg colleagues are suggesting in, the, in their stories this morning that these numbers would potentially give a little fresh flexibility to the Bank of Canada as to when they would potentially change policy rates um, so they can get to the finish line of the inflation yeah, fight. Yeah, I, I actually see it the opposite way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a stronger economy means people are doing well, getting more employment, getting more money in the economy. So, you know, the Bank of Canada statement last week, they were looking at the glass half full of inflation. The Fed's looking at it half empty of inflation. So meaning uh, Governor Tiff Macklin said, we're not discussing eases yet. Right now it's discussing how long are we keeping rates higher. We're buying the U.S. They are discussing eases. They actually put in their predictions, three eases for this year. So we're getting half full, half empty. I think a stronger economy delays cuts in Canada. Uh, because, you know, people are employed. The economy is doing well. They don't have to stimulate it as quickly. What do you give us your give us your current thinking on what the rate story looks like as we roll through the year? We think they are going to cut this year, uh, seventy five percent chance in in Canada, um, and we think it's it's a Q three story. The question is whether is it June or September, uh, but we do think the cuts start, and we think a hundred basis points. The markets are a bit higher than that, I believe, but we believe a hundred basis points have cut this this. Uh, um, this year, starting in Q3. Okay, so we'll watch for that. Um, the market's going to be watching what the Fed has to say today. What are your own expectations? Yeah, the Fed's actually on the op. They're going to say very similar stuff to Canada on two points. One is there's no more hikes, we're, and we're restrictive. The part where they differ from Canada is they're going to start discussing when they're going to ease. Canada's not discussing that. So today, the most important part of today will be the press conference. Uh, the market right now is uh, discounting a 50-50 possibility of an ease in March for the U.S., We'll see how hard they push back on that, if at all. But they're going to be data dependent. So we're going to see a situation, in your opinion, of the U.S. Federal Reserve cutting interest rates before the Bank of Canada cuts interest rates in 2024? Yeah, so here's where it becomes interesting. That's what the market's reflecting. We don't think they cut till Q3. Okay. They want to cut 
but the numbers are coming out so strong uh, in regards to the economy, retail sales. We don't know if the market will give them an opportunity to cut, but they definitely do want to ease. We still see it as a Q3 story. And yes, the way it's looking, there is a possibility the U.S. does it before Canada. Okay. I mentioned that we had uh, a data point already today, mm -hmm. which could influence the Fed. Yes. It influences you. Yes. Last time you were with us, you are pounding the table on keep an eye on the employment core index. Yeah. Without getting too wonky here, yeah. why does this matter? It matters because it's a leading indicator of services inflation. Although CPI, PCE inflation is coming down, it's all driven by goods. Services inflation still is 4 or 5%, depending on whether you look at PCE or CPI. That's very high. Services inflation is directly related to wages, how much people are making, they spend in restaurants, they spend it on trips. Uh, so that coming down uh, is, a, is a good sign in regards to less money in the pockets of people. It's still more money, it's still positive. And I think that the magic number there is 0.6. If the Fed feels confident that we will see 0.6 quarterly uh, ECI, which I don't, I, highly unlikely we get there the next sprint, it's quarterly, uh, but we do get there this year, that is their trigger to start easing. You're watching these, these readings below 1% basically start to show you that there's improving trends that justify a move towards rate cuts. It's, it's definitely doing that. They're saying there's less upward, um, it, this is the wage price spiral. That coming down reduces the possibility of a wage price spiral where people are making more money, asking for higher money, so they have to raise the price of goods. That is reduced. All right. I try to put my economics degree to work <laughs> with all these conversations with smart people like yourself. I still don't really have the best handle on where the economies ultimately are going to yeah. land, both in Canada and the U.S. A a any guesses at this point? We stay with our word from the beginning of the year, constructive. It is looking pretty good for the first half of the year. There are signs that things are slowing down, employment's slowing down. Uh, we think that's a second half of the year story, but right now, first half of the year, we're very constructive and we see it in the Canadian numbers. We